Fluorescence in situ hybridization, or FISH, is a powerful tool that has led to many advances in both science and medicine. It has improved understanding of the dynamics of cellular processes, created a method for quantization and visualization of gene expression, and led to procedures for the easy identification of genetic disorders, bacterial and viral infections, and the stage of cancer cell development in human patients. The method targets specific sequences of DNA or RNA by using a probe of the complementary nucleotide sequence, usually 15 to 30 base pairs long, that is conjugated to a fluorescent molecule. FISH starts with fixation of the target cells in methanol or formaldehyde, which has the effect of freezing the cells and their components in place so that metabolic processes like RNA degradation don't occur. The cell membrane must also be made permeable enough so that the probe can enter the cell, but not too much that the cell loses its structural integrity. The cells are repeatedly washed to remove the fixative before they are mixed with the hybridization buffer containing the probe for overnight hybridization. The next day, the cells are repeatedly washed to remove all unhybridized probes so that there is no background signal. The cell can then be mounted on glass slides, often with anti-fading buffers that inhibit the breakdown of the fluorophores and visualized under the microscope. FISH has many advantages that make it a powerful scientific and medical tool. It allows for the targeting of specific RNA or DNA sequences through the high specificity binding of complementary nucleotide sequences, giving high signal for the correct target and almost none for others. Individual RNA transcripts are seen as separate dots, which allows for the exact quantization and localization of the targets within the cell. By using different fluorophore colors, FISH can detect multiple target sequences simultaneously, allowing for direct comparison of different RNA types. A modified version of FISH even allows for live cell imaging, creating the opportunity to visualize the dynamics of cell functions, like the initiation of mRNA transcription or the movement of particles through the cell. Compared to other methods like immunofluorescence, reverse transcription real-time PCR, or detection using radioactive labels, FISH improves the assay speed, the safety and cost of materials, the resolution of images, and the versatility and specificity of probe targeting. FISH also has significantly lower background signal than immunofluorescence due to the greater specificity of nucleotide sequence binding. While other methods may have some of these abilities, FISH combines them all into one powerful technique. Recent method developments have improved FISH even further. The method TurboFISH uses higher probe concentrations, smaller hybridization buffer volumes, and an alcohol fixative to reduce hybridization times from overnight to five minutes while maintaining signal strength, which opens the possibility of using FISH for rapid diagnostic medical applications. Single nucleotide polymorphism FISH uses a partially masked probe that can differentiate between single nucleotide changes in its target before fully binding due to the greater specificity of shorter nucleotides for their targets, which allows for the detection of nucleotide sequence changes between the two alleles of a cell. While there are a number of possible downsides to FISH, many of them have been eliminated over years of development. One drawback to FISH inherent to all direct visualization methods is that resolution is diffraction limited by the wavelength of the fluorophore light, which is usually between 200 and 250 nanometers. Other problems like autofluorescence and differences in intensity between fluorophores are now corrected by mathematical methods built into visualization software. The number of possible targets used to be limited by the number of fluorophore colors but techniques of creating probes with different fluorophore combinations and using computers to distinguish the differences has raised the cap on the possible number of targets. Lastly, fluorophores can become photobleached over time due to irreversible covalent changes induced by excitation of the molecule by light, reducing the perceived signal, but mounting solutions now contain buffers that stabilize the fluorophores. Most of these issues are not unique to fish and are often worse in other methods like aminofluorescence. The use of fish in experiments has led to many new scientific findings. One instance is the detection of large transcriptional differences between a population of identical cells. Here one cell is highly expressing a target gene, while the others have little or no expression. This suggests that gene expression is inherently stochastic, but somehow gets averaged out to produce phenotypically identical cells. With fish, the presence of a transcript can be seen increasing over time and spreading throughout the cell, providing an indication of how transcription occurs over time. Fish also allows for the direct visualization of the beginning and end of transcription by creating different color probes that bind at either end of the transcript. 
Knowing the time between the appearance of each color and the length of the transcript led to confirmation of the transcription rates between 1.1 and 1.4 kilobases per minute. Fish has also provided insight into the spatial organization of genes in chromatin and determination of sites of RNA processing, transport, and cytoplasmic localization. In particular, the bright spots locate transcription sites in the cell due to higher concentrations of nascent transcripts. FISH has also led to the identification of new bacterial species and whole phyla that can't be cultured by standard methods, based on using FISH to detect sequence differences in highly conserved rRNA genes. One important medical application of FISH is the use of karyotypes to detect large-scale genomic restructurings, often associated with genetic disorders, by labeling each chromosome with a unique color. These changes can be seen when the colors for two chromosomes, like the red and the green here, co-localize when they should remain separate, indicating translocation of whole segments of chromosomes. Specific genes can be targeted by FISH to detect changes like duplications or deletions that produce three or one spots, like the red here, when there should be two, like the green. FISH can also identify cell types or species by examining gene expression. This allows for analysis of the types of bacterial species in a human patient, potentially leading to the diagnosis of an infection like periodontitis or gingivitis. In this case, the bacteria labeled in green by using fish to target bacteria-specific genes can be seen invading the space between the uncolored human cells. Detection of viral RNA can also be used to diagnose viral infections like influenza and even determine what strain it is. Rapidly identifying an illness as a viral infection could potentially decrease the improper use of antibiotics that has the potential to create drug-resistant bacteria. It can also be used on tumor cells by analyzing gene amplification levels to determine cancer types and stages of pr progression. Here the amplification of certain genes can be seen to increase from one stage of a prostate cancer to the next. This not only provides a diagnosis and prognosis of the disease, but can also be used to provide information on which treatments will or will not be effective, leading to more individualized patient care. What can be seen from these many examples is that FISH is a diverse method with potential to both advance scientific understanding and improve medical care.